Okay, everyone, thank you for coming. Um, here is uh, my presentation about something when I discovered recently a specification update, which, uh, as you will see soon, is pretty minor, but causes some things. And as I was trying to find out how to do things and had to gather this information quite a lot, so I thought, hey, let's just talk about it so other people will not have so much issues with that, hopefully. And not everything I concluded at the end is set in stone, so if we, maybe we can have some discussion here or later, uh, we will see. But I'd like to get a first short uh, overview. How many, how many of you are fami familiar with I2C or SMBus terminology? A few, not everyone. Okay, so I will just explain a lot. <laughs> well, this is not working. So uh, let's start first with the a look at the specifications, how it all started. I2C and SMBus are super old. So I think I2C started in the 70s, and the specification I'm now looking at, uh, it's the SMBus specification, is from 1998, and this has been working well so far. And this is a kind of proven technology. And one thing which is in the standard is that you can transfer blocks of data, and they introduced an upper limit for that. Uh, so if you read below the, the no, the, the red, if you see the red byte count up here, it's Basically, somewhere in the stream of data, you have a count saying so many bytes will be transferred and the data follows. And regarding the byte count, it is clearly said A may not be zero, and it is allowed to transfer a maximum size, maximum of 32 data bytes. That's pretty clear. Uh, most people adhere to that, and so things were working pretty well. So before the data, we send the length of the data block. It's basically the same for reading. So before you get the block of data, you get a, uh, a byte saying how much data is to be transferred. The special thing, which is a bit unique in the I2C and SMBus world, is that this information comes from the client, comes from the target. Usually, the bus controller is uh, deciding everything on the I2C bus. Also, uh, and so in I2C transfers, also usually the length. But here, we get the data from the target saying, hey, I'm going to send you that many bytes, which, according to the specification, should not be longer than 32 bytes. This is, we will come back to this later because driver need to take care of that. They first need to read the first byte, and then they know what's going to happen. This, is, this has some implications with the buffers involved. And then, in 2014, I call this new, because it, it, of course it's not really new anymore, there was a slight update. It was, uh, I think, a bit hidden. It now says the byte count may be zero, and the block read or block write is allowed to transfer a maximum of 255 data bytes, so the full 8-bit range. There is no, nothing like versioning update. It's the same uh, data call, it's just that the upper limit was raised. And when I say, what does it mean with that the byte count may be zero? Um, I think um, the first idea you get is, yeah, well, then there's no data to be transferred. But it's not clearly stated. I, I bet that someone, some uh, creator of some target or some device will say, ah, 255 is such an odd value. I want to transfer 256 bytes, so I'll, I'll, sus I'll just say zero is 256. I, I'll bet such a device will appear, and if you read the standard very strictly, it's not forbidden because it may be zero. What does it mean? So I think this is a little bit of a flaw in the specification, so we, but I think we, have, we should prepare for that. So this is all what uh, uh, initiated all the next slides. I will just make a small interlude because I've, when preparing this talk, I found out there's a new version of the SMBus specification released in January this year, and they fixed some minor details or uh, improved the 
paragraphs for description, but the main, by far the main change was uh, improvement in language. Throughout the document, master was replaced by controller and slave was replaced by target. And uh, I was quite amazed to see that happen because as Embass is an organization, so a lot of companies had to agree this one. And I think it's good because there have been people trying to improve the language also within Linux, and I have sympathy for that. I mean, you could look technically on that. Yeah, it's a slave. It doesn't have any to say, to, and the master is controlling the bus. So I can see where that comes from. But uh, slavery had really some... It's one of the cruelest things we had. So uh, if you meet someone and say, hey, your grandfather was a slave here. Look, my device is a slave too. That doesn't really fit. So I'm all in for improving that language. And uh, now having an official documentation defining a better wording by saying controller and target, I think we can now do that in Linux as well and use these terms. And uh, as is always also said in the specification, this was an extend, extensive change to the text files and figures. It will be the same for Linux. Uh, if somebody wants to help me with that, uh, I'm all for it because now we can point to some specification and say, okay, that's the new terms. So I was happy about it. That was also a good change in the specification. Now let's go back to the size limit. It used to be 32 bytes, now it's 255. And what it was introduced in 2002 is not very surprising. It's a simple define 32 bytes is SM bus block maximum max. Before that, the limit also exists. It was just hard coded. So this was changed for the better in 2531. We now have a define for that. Luckily, it's uh, not so widely used. If you check the kernel tree for that, you have 200 okay, uh, uses of that. So if you need to audit, 200 is not exactly nothing, but it's not so overwhelming that it can't be done. So that's, that's a good thing. So can you read that there? That's nice. And now let's have a look how it's handled within Linux. Let's assume you want to send a block of data like I did described before. Uh, where is my laser pointer? There it is. Then you have the, uh, some struct which defines a target where it should go to. The command we can ignore that's uh, just one byte describing the command. But here it gets interesting. Here's the length, and it was also said at most 32 bytes, and then you have an, just an, a byte array, a pointer to a byte array which get passed. And it's the length uh, defining the, uh, that array. That's, that's what you pass. We're now inside the Linux kernel. So if you want to use this function in the Linux kernel, that's how it looks. And what the function does, it first takes a union. That was the first time I got a little bit of shiver. I mean, they're not bad per se, but usually if you encounter unions, you sense some problems going, coming ahead. And then the uh, upper limit from the spec is enforced. If the length you provided is bigger than this maximum, then it will be cut off at that length. I think it should have returned an error, but this is a uh, behavior which is in Linux since 1998, so we're not going to change that. You have, I have no idea how many applications are depending on that, or even in kernel code. We're here inside the kernel space. And once the check is done, the length is prepended to some data block. The uh, values you provided are uh, appended using a mem copy. And all this is uh, then put to a generic transfer function. And this generic transfer function, you see here, you, it, it gets uh, this data union buffer something. And the only way to know which size the buffer is, is encoded here in this, uh, it's another define. It says what I want to do is a block data transfer. And this has, as we know, from the specification, an upper limit of 32 bytes. That's how it works. It works quite well. And if you see what, what the union is, that's, ah, okay, we, we have it. Because, uh, I just said we have these block data transfers. There are other transfers like a byte transfer, like a word transfer. And uh, to 
handle all these data types. Back then, they thought union was a good idea, so have we have this union, which can either be a byte, a word, or a uh, block, which is statically... Uh, so it's not a pointer to, to some memory, it's the memory itself, and it has this size. As we have seen, block zero is used for the length. It got encapsulated, first the length, then the data. And then you can see, and one more for user space compatibility. So there had been, there had been another format in the past which had been considered bad. But in order to not break user space, we still have to keep the size the same. Otherwise, if you would have an array of this, the size would not match and uh, the compiled binary from the user space would have a different size than the compiled binary in, this, in the kernel and they will not get uh, the proper positions inside that array and will get everything wrong. So we have to live with that extra byte. Ah, no, that didn't work. So this does work. In user space, I thought we were in kernel space, but if you look here, that's uh, the function from the lib i2c library. It's basically the same. You have the union, you check for the length. Here, this is an open coded mem copy. I don't know why. And then you have the block length at the beginning, and you pass it to a generic SMBus transfer function. And again, you have here the, the buffer. And the only indication what is the size of the buffer is this type of SM bus transfer. That's the only indication we have. As I mentioned before, uh, there are other, other transfer types indicating uh, the size of this union. Uh, it's just a set of defines. Here, this is the one we're looking at. If you look closely, you have I2C block broken. So there has been another try in the past to get it right, which was being considered not so good. So um, this is there, and we have to live with it because everything, uh, maybe you noticed here, it's called, here the path says UAPI, so everything you see here is exported to user space. That means the user space and the kernel have to agree on these numbers. It's by definition. Five means I want the size of the buffer is suitable for a block data transfer. If you use another number, the kernel will get confused. And if you would just remove this one and make block proc call a six, then it won't match anymore. And you will have lots of undesired results. So we are exporting this to user space. This has to stay, sadly. Um, Another uh, occasion where this maximum is used um, is, as I said before, there is this read transfer where the data byte comes from the target and tells you how many data bytes it wants to send. So that means each and every driver has to do, supporting that transfer type, has to do basically like this. If the first byte comes, then it has to check uh, if it's either zero or bigger than that and return a protocol failure, if so. And if not, that n runtime, while processing the transfer itself, the length gets updated by whatever, by whatever the target returned. So um, because you get data from the target, you really have to pay attention not to run into buffer overruns here. And as you can imagine, with every limit you impose there's a high risk, not a high risk, but there is a risk of off by one errors and some drivers forget to check for the length equals zero check and some are confused and think the length byte belongs to it and check for a block max plus one. So it's really annoying, but it, given the current, the old way of the standards, this is how it works. I discovered this update of the specs. I think it, I mentioned it was in 2014. I discovered it in 2015 and thought, oh, well, cool, let's update it. So pretty naively and figured soon out it was, you can't do that by, by on the side. And I didn't have any hardware. What I did somewhere later, uh, there's a test unit that's a piece of code where um, 
utilizing that Linux can also be an I2C target and then can simulate basically anything. And I wrote some code to simulate this uh, as MBUS block behavior. So assuming my implementation was right, I had at least some hardware and could do some scoping to, to have a check for this new limit. But actually doing it, I didn't, I didn't want to do it alone and I didn't really have the time to do it as a side task. And then 2020, six years later, the first user, user who wanted to have it appeared on the mailing list which, uh, who had a PM bus device, which is another subset of SM bus. And I didn't know they have in their specification, they don't have the 32 byte limit. I never knew that. And he wanted to improve access and um, wrote even two RFCs how to do it. But um, since the issue was so big, he just uh, found another way, which is very sad because he was, for the time he had, he, he didn't have so much time to work on it, but the time he had, he was very eager to get it right. And a bit later, Sultan Alzawaf, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, came and the, he had a surprising information for me. He was only interested in fixing it in one driver for his laptop because he said if, I, if he extends the length of the transfer and reduces the number of transfer, he could save 1.6 watts from his laptop usage. And I said, well, that's a lot. And he even claimed that uh, he can feel it. Without his patch improving the situation, his touchpad would get really warm. Without it, it would be okayish. And uh, so his works for me approach was all sadly not upstreamable, but the information is that, wow, that makes a difference, was new and helpful for me. And in 22, there was February this year, there was the last approach from Matt Johnson who wanted to encapsulate some other network stream over I2C. And of course, if you want to have a stream transferred, 255 bytes are a lot better than 32. But also given, his, so he tried a little, but given his time constraints, he just went with the old limit. Well, so let's see. Ah, there, the counter's working. So possible solutions. Uh, the most naive approach is, yeah, well, just increase the uh, limit. It's a one-line patch. And uh, what would happen then? Uh, I mentioned this before. It, it wouldn't work okay -ish with some bit of audit inside the kernel because inside the kernel we have control over uh, all uses of this define. And so we can make sure it always fits. But as I said before, it's exported to user space and you have the problem that you might have a user space which is compiled against old kernels, had, old kernel headers, meaning in this case 32 bytes and the kernel is with new its own headers 255 bytes. So now imagine an old user space saying hey give me I want to read a block of data here's your 32 byte buffers buffer and the kernel says oh cool there's a buffer it's 255 bytes yay I'll fill it. Okay crash boom whatever goes wrong this is not good can't cannot do this. So what Daniel Stodden proposed was to keep the old define as it is and define a new one. And use it here uh, in the union. So whenever we encapsulate the data, we make sure it's big enough. We don't know if we use it, but we make sure it's big enough. This is the one part. But remember, uh, there was these defines with, which describe the buffer, how big it is. These, you know, uh, maybe you recall them here. This, these were the old ones, block data. And of course, now if you change the size of the buffer, you need a new, new defines to describe how big is the buffer. And what he did, uh, where is my laser? Here it is. Um, he renamed the legacy ones to from SMBus to SMBus1, but kept the number. 
and introduce new ones with higher numbers. So he gets some compatibility. If there's an, uh, no, don't mix it up. If you have uh, an old user space using the old limit, it will still send the five and the kernel looks up five, oh, it's, it's still 32 bytes and it will work. If you get, if you recompile your application without changing anything, you will get the new limit for free because that's, that's the old name. As MBUS block data, it used to be the old name. It, it will just send a nine instead of a five to the kernel. And then this kernel say nine, ah, okay, you have a bigger buffer, no problem, here's your bigger block of data. Big problem, what if you have a new user space and an old kernel. The new user space says, hey, I want a huge block of data here, number nine describes it. And the old kernel says, number nine, never heard of that, failure. Can't do. You see, if you have an old kernel, old user space, new kernel, new user space will always match, no problem. It's always this old versus new problem. Um, so the next thing you could think of, okay, then we leave these numbers completely alone and just introduce new numbers for the bigger transfer size, opt-in. We're getting better. <laughs> but it, then we have still a problem with libraries. And in a perfect world, this doesn't need to go wrong, but if you think about ABIs, you should really believe in Murphy's law. Everything which can go wrong will go wrong. Let's assume you have a shiny new, where's my laser pointer? A shiny new kernel and which supports the new block size. And your application is self-compiled and you use the new kernel headers, you have also the new block size, but you're running Debian, for example, and use lib i square c and your user land is still compiled against some older kernel headers, which only know 32 bytes, then your application with you this will use this block write function with the new limit, 255 bytes. And as you have seen in user space, there's a check. If your length is bigger as, as mbus block max, it will cut it to that limit. For the library, the limit is still 32 bytes. So it will just send 32 bytes to the kernel and uh, you wonder why things are not working the way as you'd expect them. And until finding out that this is a library which is compiled against kernel headers, that will take some time, I guess. So I'm not, I'm not really favoring this uh, option, but we're getting closer to that. I think um, we really need to use a new IOCTL call. Make it completely opt-in. Don't touch anything which has ever been exposed to user space. So we do define the new maximum. We do define a completely new type, which has the bigger limit. And this type is only used with a special IOCTL call, which is new. This is the old one. We will never ever touch it. We will just introduce a new one. And this makes also this old versus new a bit better because if you call into the kernel and say, hey, I want to use this, use this new um, IOCTL and the old kernel doesn't know about it, it will just say, it gives a proper error message. It doesn't cut off your buffer. It just gives you a proper error message. So applications can try to use use the new IOCTL, and if they get a failure, you can still use the old one. Um, so far, I think, I, ha I haven't found yet a, a, a scenario where this should not work. You have to update your applications, you have to update your libraries, yes. But uh, regarding regressions, this is kind of good, I think. And what I also, I, I'd still change it a little, I, you see how much pain it is to change something in all this ABI stuff. So I would just use the block maximum as 256 and not 255 because I'm quite sure such a device not uh, adhering to the specs will appear. I mean, 
that's my experience as a uh, embedded developer for, oh gosh, <laughs> for a long time now. Um, it needs, of course, a command saying, okay, yeah, we know the standard is like this, but for reasons, we add one to it. And uh, to make this accessible to function, uh, to make this distinguishable, we need one bit which can be set so you know your device supports that or not. And then you can decide, I will do this or that. Hooray, something easy. Once all this done, we can have one bit defined and uh, let applications do their thing. Um, so, although I've been talking quite some things, it's not all I have covered, but uh, otherwise I've been talked an hour longer. There are, are some other cases to be considered. There's another transfer type called block process call, which needs to be uh, considered as well. There is an IOCTL called read write, where you can send custom messages. That also needs to be considered if you use this receive length I mentioned before. But um, the basic ideas and the basic problems are the same. So, so if we got a good approach with this block write and block read, we can transfer that to the others and just need to do a little bit more of audit. But that's doable. It should work and we should not regress that for sure. So we need to pay attention. But the use of these features is not so high that so we don't need to audit so much. So, okay. And I mean, I square she is not a super sexy high bandwidth, high developer subsystem. So is it really worth doing all this? And I agree, I think yes, because it, I think it would be good for Linux to say, hey, we're having full or better compatibility for at least as MBUS 3 and PMBUS. I mean, this is used in servers quite a lot. And there are also some clients who actually need this functionality. With most, you can fall back to the smaller transfer size, okay, but some new devices, you cannot do this. You need the huge transfer size, otherwise they won't work at all. I also think the power savings, which were new to me, are a good, really good idea to have. I mean, if the touchpad saves power is good, if you have less CPU utilization, it's also good. And I think we also have better drivers, uh, bus controller drivers, because you need, we can, it allows us to remove these error prone checks from the drivers. They can just go away because we, with a new size limit, we have always buffer which will fit. So this annoying code can go away. What is not, no, are the free support. SMBus is, uh, with the second last line, I mean, SMBus is a subset of I2C. So if you have a regular I2C controller, it will be able to handle the new limit automatically. It's not like the, we, we need to wait for new hardware to actually support that new feature. Most hardware out there will support it if we get the buffers right. And this, this is what I mean for free. We get, uh, yeah, we're not so hardware dependent with that. What it will not be, it will not be much faster. I mean, you save some execution time on the CPU, but well, we're talking about the bus here working on 100 or 400 kilohertz and you still have to do all the transfers, be it in one chunk or multiple chunks. The overhead uh, when it comes to execution times is not so big compared to that. But um, the utilization is still nice because you might go to, a, if you can offload the data transfer, you might go to into a deep uh, sleeping state. That is also good. And the path, path forward as I see it, I hope it uh, became somewhat obvious by now, in user space, keep everything existing as is and everything else is opt-in. Make the new IOCTL, make the new define for block size and um, don't touch anything else. Kernel size is a little bit, uh, on the kernel space, it's a little bit different because I really would like to make 
the new size, the default for the buffers. So we never ever run into buffer overflows. I have really, no, I'm, again, Murphy's Law, if we have two kinds of buffers, people will mix it up. And I will just make sure that we have one buffer size which is big enough to never overrun. Luckily for us, these buffers are only used mostly once at a time. It's not like we're using tons of memory. We basically we're losing 220 bytes or something. And I think for the improved safety, this is worth it. And I also allowed it, if we have the buffers which are always big enough, then we move, uh, we can move checks from the bus controller drivers which just try to enforce a protocol to the client drivers which actually know what data, kind of data they will expect, what they expect and if the size is proper despite the upper limit. I mean, the client knows, oh, I want a string of 10 bytes and everything else is than 10 is wrong regardless of the limit of the transfer. So I think we, we should um, do it like this. So my conclusion for dealing with this case, and I think it will fit for most cases, if you want to change user space ABIs, opt-in is the way to go. Don't try to modify something which is already existing because of these uh, old user space versus new kernel or new user space versus old kernel mismatch. Lots of things can go wrong. Uh, divide and conquer still helps a lot. Uh, it really helped me to tackle the problem better or understand the problem better if I was separating it between kernel and user space. And this is not, this is really a big task. And as I said, i 2 c is not the network layer. If um, it, I, I'm quite sure if you could somehow uh, uh, decrease the latency of the network layer a lot, uh, more people would jump on the wagon to help doing that. But uh, for i 2 c I was, except for the three, four people I just mentioned, basically alone with it. But uh, uh, so I need some focus. And you can do a lot of things wrong. So that's why I need some focus on that. And currently, uh, I didn't have that because I have other jobs to do. So that's why we still, after eight years, still not have it, although we now have a roadmap. I have to thank Renesas for partly funding my work. So they contracted me and allowing me to do i 2 c work on the site and we would not be here if they didn't do this kind of support for me. But um, implementing all this is, is another ta task which I try to get funded somehow. Uh, I can't really put all this work only to them because they also have other interests. Um, but yeah, at least they did this to, so I can present a roadmap to you. And with only two minutes left on the clock, uh, this was my talk about user space ABIs. I hope you got some idea what is, what is involved in that. And if you sometimes in the talk uh, got the feeling, ooh, here be dragons, then I did something right, because there are dragons. Thank you very much. <laughs> are there questions? Oh yeah, there's one. Can you please go to the microphone? If you are adding a new uh, kernel API anyway, why not do away with the union drop that you ate at the beginning and like add a new member for the lens? So in the future, if you happen to need more than 265 uh, uh, bytes, you, the user space can just say, my buffer is that long. Why not use the occasion for that? Um. So like have a length value struct instead of the union. I, I see what you're saying. So you um, maybe make a pointer out of it instead of another fixed array size buffer, something like this. Uh, could be argued. Um, I think there's one argument against it. Um, um, the specification defines this block right, especially with one byte of length. If they would introduce two byte of length, 
they really have to make a different uh, data type out of it. And then we would completely need to handle it different anyhow. So I can, I think I can safely say eight byte is the upper limit for that transaction type. But still you could remove that unions, one, of, one or two of these union members. For the new, yeah. yeah. It's quite kind of pointless to have a U8 byte and then having the same union, a U8 byte array, you can just. Yeah, that, that could be that during implementation that comes, uh, that makes sense. Thank you. There's another question. Could, could you please come to the microphone? And this will be, oh no, it's lunch afterwards, so we can go on forever. <laughs> okay. Is there a way? Is there yeah. a way to deprecate the old one, or will it live forever? Is there a way to detect what? Deprecate, uh, remove the previous uh, struct and the data length. Deprecate? Um, well, there is SMB and SMB. In, in kernel space or in user space? Both, maybe. So actually, I'd like to deprecate it in kernel space to make sure, like as I said, every buffer has a bigger size which cannot overflow. Um, in user space? In user space, you can't, uh, I, w I wouldn't really do it because uh, you need to have it anyhow for, um, b for backwards compatibility. Yeah. And I think it's okay if you, if you know that this block data you want to receive is below 32 bytes, then why not? This may not be I2Q or SM bus, uh, may not be getting too many updates, but uh, in a case it does. Won't it keep, uh, get longer, bigger and bigger? It, it, you will just keep adding new yeah, yeah. CTLs, data structures, if there is no proper way to deprecate old ones? Is the problem? Um, uh, yeah, as a dep deprecating as in, uh, hey, uh, please don't use it anymore, switch to another one, yes. Removing, no. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Some, any question left? Good, then let's go to lunch. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>